Tonight we're doing a chocolate tasting of Ecuadorian chocolate and the company is Republica de Cacao and all of the chocolate is from different regions in Ecuador. They also have different percentages so if people like a little bit more sweet chocolate we have 67 percent. For a little bit darker we have 75. So what's so, spe what's so special or significant of this kind of chocolate compared to chocolate you might find in other parts of the world? I think that special thing about this chocolate is that it's from different parts. So there's subtle differences you can taste in the regions that they're from, from a little bit more earthy to just a little bit more sweet. Okay. And uh, <laughs> since I'm not eating chocolate these days, um, but but I mean, are there are there things in the chocolate? Or I mean, this is just pure cacao, so it's solid chocolate. Okay. This is not the kind of chocolate you're going to find in a in a 7-Eleven. Uh, no, no, no. This is specialty chocolate that you'll find at the Mola Museum store. Okay. Give us an idea of like, I mean, would you use this chocolate in cooking or anything like that? It is popular in cooking. Um, you can eat it plain just like a candy bar, but a lot of people have said that they cook with it as well and it works really well. Um, melted and they make hot chocolate with it also. All right, so this is chocolate that you're gonna, you would normally sell in the store? Yes, yeah, we always have this brand. Give us an idea of what we're talking about price-wise. This is six dollars, oh, and cool. for this bar, it's six dollars as well. Oh, okay. So I mean, this I just I don't know why I thought this was going to be much more expensive. No, it's very reasonably priced. So talk about the the tequila. What what's the name of the tequila, and what's uh, what's special about it? It's Marquez de Valencia, and our tequila has no additives, virtually no additives, and it comes from Arana, Jalisco. Um, Unlike any, most tequilas, our tequila is baked. Most tequilas are mass produced or autoclaved. Uh, our tequila takes about 15, 17 hours to be, uh, to, to be made. Most tequilas takes about five hours and they, they're, they're made in steel tanks. Ours is done the old fashioned way. So it retains more of the flavor and more of the, um, it, it's just a lot better tasting, higher quality. Well, you know, there's so many people who are claiming that they have tequila, <laughs> because but but in order to be called tequila, you actually have to be from a certain region of, of Mexico. Am I correct? Five, five regions of Mexico. Number one is Jalisco, and ours is from Jalisco, Arandas, which is uh, northern northeastern part of Jalisco, which grows our agaves grow on the highlands. There's lowlands and highlands, so our agave is actually uh, considered one of the best in the world. So we're part of that, and it's made the old-fashioned way. Now, this is not something that necessarily you want to take a quick shot of, am I correct? No, not at all. It's actually uh, made for sipping, and it's it, there, it, there's well tequila. Our tequila is a uh, top shelf tequila, which is considered, uh, uh, it's more for sipping. It's like a fine cognac. So, I mean, one of the things that's great about these nights and La Noche is it, it brings a lot of folks here, particularly younger folks. You, you reach people that you don't normally probably run into. I absolutely agree. I've actually met a lot of people tonight that I've seen in the community. I actually sh uh, shared with a lot of people on Facebook and other forms of media to show up tonight. And now that they're here, they're like, wow, they're surprised. So it's really good because I don't think a lot of people realize that Long Beach does have a lot uh, young artists uh, community. They're kind of hidden, but we're here. And that's what I'm here doing, supporting everybody across the board. Um, but as you take a look around you, there is a lot of uh, younger, uh, you know, predecessors to the more mature people that have been around for a while. So I think it's really awesome. Talk to me about what you're doing tonight, what kind of music you're playing. Um, I've been playing stuff from all over the Latin American uh, diaspora, also some African music, some Caribbean music, kind of influencing, you know, uh, this kind of universal uh, African and Latin American rhythms. It's all about the rhythm, it's all about the rhythm, always. You know, you have to admit that there's a lot of folks who when they think of music from Latin America, they just have one brand of music in mind. It's either salsa or it's ranchero. Right, right, right. But it's, I mean, it's everything. Right. And that's really interesting because salsa is actually a, a New York invention, you know? Right. It was created here by Puerto Ricans. Right. So, I mean, that's really cool. But um, I don't know. There's a lot, a lot of music south of the border, a lot of amazing music south of the border. 
And I, I think, you know, it's, it's slowly coming more and more into norm, into popularity. I mean, reggaeton is really big right now. Um, dance hall is really big, and that's a Caribbean rhythm. You know, it's, it's reggae with, a, you know, a faster beat. And, you know, so there's a lot of different stuff coming up right now. And I feel Latin America's got a lot to offer in the next year. And, you know, as a record collector, I've been seeing a lot more Latin American compilations and African compilations coming out in the last five years or so. So, you know, music is getting out there. I, I think we're come, becoming more universal with our knowledge about music. Yeah, the other part, when you mention, you know, the compilation stuff, I mean, there's, there's really, like, a lot of music just getting fused together. Yeah, definitely. Um, the, 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 in, the internet has created so much for people all over the world. I mean, people, you know, in Japan and Korea, Africa, you know, Colombia, Germany, they're all listening to the same type of music because they can find it on the internet. All you have to do, all you have to do is have access to Google. And you know, and it's right in front of you. So you get, so you get bands from Africa sounding like German, you know, hip hop guys, or you have guys in France who sound like '70s Afro beat. You know, it's just like all over the place, and it's great. It's it's like an amazing thing. I really like it. Talk a little bit about not only this today, but you've got a lot of other exhibits that are coming up. You've got another 11 months of, of uh, En La Noches. Talk a little bit about what, what we can expect. Well, with En La Noche, we're trying things a little bit differently this year. And this is, this is the first of the new En La Noche. Um, what we're doing is once a quarter, we'll be partnering with several organizations. Um, each, each of those quarters will pick three to four local organizations that we'll partner with, we'll encourage them to bring their members, and we'll reach out to members of the community, so anybody's invited. But by partnering with another organization, it ensures that we get new people here to MOLA and expose new constituents to MOLA. And hopefully our members will come and the word will get out throughout the community more and more. So once a quarter, you'll see larger in Lenotes than what you've seen here in the past. And in the in-between months, we'll have smaller, more salon-style in Lenotes, where you'll get a more intimate environment and an opportunity to come and really mingle and get to know people um, that have similar interests as you do. And our hope is that we'll sort of build the name of the program and we'll sort of evaluate at the end of the year and figure out what's the best formula for next year. <laughs>